No calls. Now we move on to Cameroon, uh, which is set to hold national elections this coming Sunday, October 9th. And recently, some of the country's senior officials visited Washington to assure the international community and the Cameroonians in the diaspora that the elections will be free and fair. But some remain concerned that the political playing field favors incumbent president Paul Bia. My colleague Ndimuyake Mwakalieri has more on this story. Sunday's presidential election in Cameroon has a special significance for its citizens in the diaspora. They can now vote for the first time. A recent discussion on the fairness and transparency of the October 9th ballot attracted many interested parties involved in the electoral process. Speakers at the event, co-sponsored by the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars, included senior officials in the Prime Minister's office and the chairman of the Electoral Commission. Fabian Nkot, a senior advisor to Prime Minister Philemon Yang, says the country is committed to holding free and fair elections. Cameroon is not heaven. Nobody is saying that. But what we are saying here is that we are improving in the field of modernizing the electoral process of, of the country. Incumbent President Paul Beer, representing the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement, or CPDM, is one of 21 candidates vying for the presidency, a factor many have openly criticized, citing lack of economic and political progress during his 29 years in office. But Gogomu Paul Mingo, director of cabinet in Yang's office, defended Beer's record, adding that all information is available to the public. For anybody who has been to Cameroon of late, he would have seen the changes in the economy, in infrastructure, the changes in the political, I mean the freedom that we've talked about. I think there is no place in Africa where we have more than 300 papers on which anybody can say anything. You abuse the president as you want. Some audience members also questioned Beer's eligibility to run, citing a constitutional modification he made in 1996, limiting terms in office to two years. They argue that though a 2008 amendment scrapped term limits, Beer should not qualify. Previous elections have been marred by opposition boycotts and allegations of vote rigging in Beer's favor. Critics also questioned the independence of the Electoral Board of Elections Cameroon, or ELECAM, since most of its members are former CPDM members, including its chairman, Fonkam Samuel Azu. Jules Conchu represents the opposition Union of Democratic Forces of Cameroon, also contesting in the elections. He traveled to the United States today with people of the government. So in the plan, they can organize everything. How come you can be a referee and be part of the other team? That cannot work. That's not election. But Fonkam Azu says the commission is neutral. He credited the government for enabling close to 8 million people to register by making it free. He also says ballot tabulations by the National Vote Counting Commission is foolproof. There are two justices of the Supreme Court. There are five members of ELECA and then all the representatives of the candidates who stood for the elections. This is the commission that sits down and goes through all the results. Mireille Dupé, who also questions Elecam's neutrality, opposes Beer's re-election bid. She says his 29-year rule has not allowed political space for a viable replacement. Paul Beer has politarized the society. The option is to put in place like a, a traditional college for two years. And then maybe from there our a strong potential can come out from that traditional period. But Beer's supporters say that because the opposition is weak, the country is not ready for change. Lady Kate Njoma, founder of Miss Africa USA, credits Beer for maintaining peace among the country's more than 200 ethnic groups. She also commends Kabang Wala, the only female opposition candidate running in the election. I think she's not quite ready yet, but, you know, she has... Uh, been able to inspire more women to think in that line. And I hope that in future she will come back up again. We need women in that position. Despite assurances that the elections will be fair, the Wilson Center's Africa program director, Steve McDonald, says concerns are legitimate. We want to believe that. We hope to believe it. We certainly uh, wish uh, the country well for these elections, but suspicions still abound because of past performance. So I think it's, it's fair and appropriate and timely that we're having this uh, forum. There are more. Thanks, uh, Ndimiyake, for that interesting report. Uh, now, joining us here in uh, Washington studios is our distinguished guest, uh, Timothy Donald.